Hey there friends, Joy here with subrosatea.com. Welcome to Tea Time on Tuesdays at 2. Today's topic, we're going to dive into your kidneys, dandelion leaf, and how does tea affect your kidneys. So first of all, welcome. I said that part already. I intend these videos to be informational, educational, and inspirational. I invite you to steep yourself a cup of tea and join me to learn more about the tea that we love and how it can help you live your best life one cup of tea at a time. Hey there, Renee. Thanks for coming. Hi, Denise. I appreciate you coming. So today we're going to talk about dandelion leaf. Dandelion is actually not tea. Dandelion is considered an herbal. It's considered a tisane. It does not come from the tea plant. And that is going to be very important for today's discussion on tea. So this is what dandelion leaf looks like. We sell dandelion leaf over at Sub Rosa Tea. And I have been calling things like dandelion leaf an add-in because I couldn't find a better term for it. I made it up. Lots of tea companies sell tea that's blended, but I kept coming across these single ingredients that were important, that were important for your health or important for other reasons, and I wanted to be able to offer them to you solo so you could decide what you want to do with them. So at Sub Rosa Tea, anything with a light purple colored label is an add-in. So we currently sell seven tea add-ins and all of them are caffeine free. At Sub Rosa Tea, we even have a caffeinometer on our labels. And while all of our tea can be hot or cold steeped, for the purposes of this discussion, when we are discussing add-ins and herbals, you may really want to consider steeping them hot to get the maximum benefits out of them. And you can decide later if you're going to drink it hot or drink it cold. So typically I call it an add-in because you have the option to add it to something else. If you want to consume multiple cups of your add-ins throughout your day in order to change your health, I don't want your taste buds to get bored. There's no reason not to add something like dandelion leaf to other teas. And we're gonna talk about some really good choices in just a minute. But first of all, I wanna make sure that you all know my background. As I just identified myself, my name is Joy and I'm the owner of Sub Rosa Tea. We have been in business since June of 2012. I'm the owner of a tea company. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not a physician. I don't have that type of training. But what I do have, I happen to have a love for science. I have a bachelor's degree in biology. I have a minor in chemistry. I went to school many, many moons ago, a long time ago. But why that's important to this is I'm very interested in the science behind when people say things like, oh, dandelion so good for your kidneys. Really? I want to know about that. I want to know why. I want to know how. How much do I have to drink? Um, what are the other side effects? What are the negative things? I want to know it all. So even though I'm not a medical professional, I do tend to do deep dives when I'm doing my research. I am at Sub Rosa Tea all about great flavor. I am all about great taste, but I don't think that we have to um, give up great taste in order to get some good health benefits out of the ingredients that we use. So first of all, let's steep up a cup of dandelion. So again, this is dandelion leaf, and that's what we sell at Sub Rosa Tea. And I actually have my glass teapot right here. This glass teapot makes four cups. So what you're going to see me do is put four servings of tea into this glass teapot. And on the package, I have how much tea is a serving, okay? So all tea are different. So just refer to the package when you're gonna make it at home. So I am using a tablespoon. Oh, can you see this teapot has 
an infuser basket for loose leaf tea. Uh, this teapot actually is designed for blooming tea and loose leaf tea. So we're going to put the infuser right in and I'm going to put again four servings of loose leaf tea into the teapot because the teapot makes four cups. And I have my electric kettle. It just came up to a boil right off camera. So I'm pouring the boiling hot water over the dandelion leaf. And again, this teapot makes four cups. So I'm gonna pour it kind of slowly because we're chit-chatting and I'm gonna give it time to make sure it's definitely covering and wetting all of those great dandelion leaves. I also decided to use this glass teapot because I just wanted you to be able to see everything that I'm doing. We do have other steeping devices over at Sub Rosa Tea. Now most of the herbals I recommend you steep five minutes, but you can definitely steep them longer. I think it has more to do with taste at that point, and I hate to group them all together. It would probably depend on which one of the herbals that we're talking about. So while this steeps, let's chat a little bit. So last summer, Mr. Sabrosa T had a little situation. I have known the man for a very long time. He has no known medical issues whatsoever. I have never seen him in any pain at all, ever, <laughs> in, in all the time that I have known him. So he grew up on a farm and then he was in the military and uh, he now works for the railroad. He's a very hardy soul. He's very hardworking. Um, nothing really gets to him. And like I said, um, he's very aggressive and I've never really seen him in pain. So for him to alert me that he was in an excruciating amount of pain on that day really caused me to have some alarm, I must say, because he's just such a tough guy and he just never <laughs> mentions anything. So anyway, so Mr. Sub Rosa T um, suffered for, oh, hours. He suffered for hours because he's a night owl, okay? He typically works nights. So he typically works nights, so I was asleep while he was awake, and thank goodness it was one of his off days because I can't imagine if he was at work when this happened. So he was um, by himself, he was in pain for a few hours and it didn't go away and it was excruciating. And then he woke me up and he's like, there is something very wrong with me. So after a little bit of discussion and knowing that this was certainly not something that I could possibly remedy, I drove him to the ER. And I have to tell you, I have never been to the ER before. I am an inside girl. <laughs> I don't play rough. <laughs> I'm a princess. I've never broken a bone. I don't have anything wrong with me that I know of. I've certainly never had a reason to go to the ER before. So that was quite an experience. But at the time, last summer, quite frankly, it was very, very early on a Sunday morning and no one else was there. So we got excellent care. And I have to say that the staff there was just so fabulous and um, patient and kind because the man was writhing in pain which is, again, not something that I'm accustomed to. So he had these symptoms that he kept translating for me. I was trying to listen just to the symptom and not, I'm not a medical professional. I wasn't going to translate into a diagnosis. He just was kept telling me this is how he feels. So when we get to the ER, we had both a female nurse and a male doctor. And the male doctor kept listening to my husband's translations, what he thought was wrong with him. But oddly enough, interesting, right? The female nurse kept listening only to the symptoms. She didn't translate anything. Outside of the room, I think they had a bet going. So one of them thought he had kidney stones and the other one was listening to his translation that thought there might be something else wrong. Can you guess which of those two people won? Anyway, so Long story, we honestly weren't there all that long. I know he was in a lot of pain, etc., but we weren't there all that long. And the simplest thing to do is to get a scan. So they did a scan, which proved that or showed that they, he had a four millimeter kidney stone. I looked it up. Do you know how small that is? Oh my goodness, you guys. 
I mean, really, so, 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 so small. I was gonna grab a ruler and like bring it up to the camera to show you, but I don't think it would translate really well into the camera. Oh my gosh, okay, that's pretty small. For something so small to cause him such pain, I was curious, okay? I spent literally the rest of the day diving into what causes kidney stones, because I did not want one, because that man is tough, and he was really in a lot of pain. So I wanted to know what caused it, what can we do to prevent it, what can we do to get rid of it, what are the next steps, because I am the one in this house that does all the cooking. I do all the food prep. I provide all the drinks. I, <laughs> I do all the things. So if I was the cause of this, I needed to know. And also to avoid it for myself. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, self-preservation. I was pretty high up there because this guy was crazy. And guess what, friends? In all that pain, do you know what the the end result is? The end result is go home. It's it's not to do anything. Literally, there's we're just going to wait it out. Oh, isn't that interesting? I think uh, most of us who have something wrong want it cured. <laughs> they sent him home with some painkillers. Thank goodness, because he was writhing in pain. So they sent him home with painkillers and also with the prescription to drink lots of fluids. Well, guess what this girl knows how to do? Trust me, I got that covered. But I needed to know what, I needed to know how. I was really invested in this process. So anyway, we at that time were calling the kidney stone Spike. And I have to tell you why, because of course I looked it up on my phone and um, every article that I read had an image of a spherical um, thing that had lots of spikes on it. Okay, so we were calling it Spike. So every once in a while we'd be like, have you seen Spike yet? How is Spike making you feel? Do you need another painkiller? I'm telling you, this guy did not want to take painkillers. He was opposed to it, and I can't really tell you why. He's just a tough guy. He really did not take them. But we had the prescription filled anyway, and we followed the doctor's advice by drinking lots of fluids. So at the time that I had recorded the video before, when I told all of my Sub Rosa Tea audience, it was only two days after this had all happened. This happened on a Sunday morning and I recorded my last video on a Tuesday. And again, this was last summer. I never followed up with any of you. I can't believe it. My friends um, who are nurses, all of my customers who are nurses kept asking, how is he? What's going on? Well, guess what, friends? Um, we never did see Spike. Again, really, the man was fine. Um, by the time I recorded the video and, uh, you know, nothing ever really happened. So I can't tell you if the scan was false, but the man was in a lot of pain. I would assume that somehow he passed naturally, but I will at least tell you what we did. And of course we increased his fluids immediately. We started drinking dandelion tea. I say we because yes, I did it too. Why? I don't know. I didn't have a, a kidney stone, but I drank it too. If I was going to make him a cup of tea, I was going to drink it as well. So we added dandelion leaf tea to as many of the other teas that made sense. I think a lot of you know that cranberry is good for your kidneys. But I will say, since I have you, is that a lot of people assume cranberry juice is the way to go. I am not anti-sugar. I don't want you to think that I am. But logically speaking, okay, cranberries are tart, but your body doesn't need the sugar. So I like that tea, cranberry tea, can give you all of the health benefits that you're searching for without you having to go buy juice because I don't think anyone needs the extra sugar even though cranberries are tart. Our cranberry tea is caffeine free, it's a tisane. And the way I have overcompensated for the tartness of the cranberry is I've added apple to the recipe. So those two things are naturally balance each other out and it makes it a fabulous, great cup of tea. But anyway, back to the dandelion. As you can see here, it's been steeping a few minutes. So the leaves are voluminous. They've definitely steeped up really well. There's already a nice color to the tea. I'm sorry I didn't take a look at the clock, but I at least wanted to let you know that in addition to the tea, my research found that there are a couple of foods that you should avoid. There's five, and one of them is something that you might be interested in. So when you've got kidney problems, you are told to avoid both beets and rhubarb, which were not things that we ate a lot of in the house. I'm not opposed to them. I like them, but it wasn't something that I could even tell you we ate on a regular basis. So I don't think it was something that I caused in my cooking. 
Uh, number three on the list is chocolate, which by the way, Mr. Sabrosa tea loves chocolate. So the man did eat a lot of it. Um, a fair amount of it, let's say. You know, a piece every day, like a, like a bite-sized piece every day. I wouldn't have considered that to be extreme, nonetheless. Um, nuts are on the list. So again, uh, we've been keto for quite some time now. So we do eat nuts. We eat them. I mean, we eat them on a regular basis, I would say, but again, not in mass quantities to cause anything. And the fifth thing, if you do a Google search, things to avoid if you've got a kidney situation is tea. I'm not going to hide that fact. It says that you should avoid tea. And a lot of urologists will tell you to avoid tr tea drinking when you have kidney problems. Well, you know I had to dive into that because I was certainly not going to back a product that could possibly be harmful. So my, re my research has shown that you would literally need to be drinking 16, 16 cups of tea every day for you to have so much oxalate in your system that it would cause a problem. A lot of us have calcium in our system. And the way spike is formed, a kidney stone, is when oxalate and calcium get together and it becomes a very spiky situation. Honestly, a lot of us have kidney stones in us and it's fine because we are staying hydrated, our kidneys are well diluted and functioning perfectly well. The kidney stones are so small that we pass them naturally and they are not affected. They don't affect us in any way. We don't even notice that we have them. So you would have to drink that much tea. Also, oxalate friends, oxalate, the thing that they say might possibly be causing your kidney stones, is only found in tea, the tea plant. We sell herbal teas that do not have the tea plant in them called mate. Mate is not the tea plant. It does have caffeine. And we sell 30 flavors of completely caffeine-free tea that have no oxalate at all. So if you're listening to this video and you know someone in your life who has been told, do not drink tea ever again, friends, we have got great news for you. 30 flavor options currently at Sub Rosa Tea, no oxalate. And I suspect that's what your doctor is trying to ask you to avoid. Even though I honestly do not know anyone who does drink 16 cups a day, it was a very interesting article that got tea to make the list in the first place. This young man was very hot one summer and he decided to buy cases and cases of pre-made bottled tea and he claimed that he drank 16 a day for X number of months and by the fall he had kidney stones and that was you know how tea kind of made the list to begin with because of his story. I don't know if any of it's true. It wasn't exactly a scientific study. But nonetheless, I was hoping that this might be good news for a lot of people. So in addition, I would definitely have to say, do you need to avoid tea? I'm going to go with no. Just be, be um, smart with your decisions depending on your own medical background. This dandelion tea is definitely ready to go. But I also wanted to show you what our cranberry tea looks like because it's very, very different. Our cranberry tea, like I said, it's got cranberry and apple. It does have rose hips and hibiscus. It does have elderberries. And friends, again, this is our cranberry harvest tea. So cranberry, also very good for your kidneys. And this is completely caffeine free. So this would be a very good option. This is what we did. We added the dandelion leaf to the cranberry tea and that's mostly what he drank um, again he after that day he never had symptoms he wasn't in any pain he must have either passed it right away or possibly been misdiagnosed somehow again we just don't know so luckily his suffering was very short also what i read was watermelon is very very good for your kidneys um, watermelon obviously has lots of water, right? And this is our watermelon tea. So it also has watermelon. It has apples, lime, carrots. Um, it's got rose hips again and hibiscus. 
Hibiscus is known to lower blood pressure and the way that works is it's good for your fluids. So using hibiscus with these other teas that are diuretics. Dandelion leaf specifically has, um, it has both vitamins and minerals. It's known to cleanse the blood. It boosts your immune system, which I think everyone is thinking about right now. And it really acts like a diuretic. It helps your kidneys to function specifically because of it. So once again, totally recommend hot steeping your dandelion leaf, but no reason in the world to just drink it plain unless you want to. You could absolutely add it to another tea of your choice, especially when you're thinking about your health benefits. I also brought out in front of me here our honey stir spoons. We sell these in multiple, multiple flavors that you could easily um, stir some honey into your dandelion. If you've not had it, dandelion leaf tastes very similar to green tea or white tea. It's just a little on the sweeter side. So it's not bitter, um, it's not grassy, it's not a weed, my friends, it's not a weed. It is definitely part of our catalog and could definitely be very helpful as a part of your healthy regimen. So anyway, everything that I talked about here today during Tea Time on 2 is available on our website. And the Cranberry and the Dandelion, you will again, friends, find them on the caffeine-free page of our Loose Leaf Tea over at Sub Rosa Tea. And if you are interested, every week, Tuesdays at 2, I do a video like this where I do a deep dive on a different topic. And you can find a whole catalog of our videos both on our website, on our Facebook page, and also on our YouTube channel. So thank you for watching today's tea time on Tuesdays at 2. No matter what you do with the rest of your day, have yourself a cup of tea and take care of you. Bye-bye, friends.